Hey, hey, hey. To have fun of the out of this world story from our space. When you discover your partner is cheating, the worst thing you can do is pretend you didn't see anything or didn't find anything. Nothing good comes from sweeping things under the rug. Today on our space, no matter how much it hurts, we have to confront the hurt or the wound will continue to grow and it'll silently eat us alive. A burst? Trust that people see things that we can't always see for ourselves. 20 years ago, I was cheated on, but was never told the full truth. How can I get the truth? And does it really matter if I do? 20 years ago, this year, I was cheated on by my wife. D-Day for me was June 10th of 2002, around 1 p.m. For reference, we'll call O.M. the other man, and we'll just call my wife, wife, and basic titles like mom and dad to keep anyone from being embarrassed. Short backstory. My mom and dad had been telling me that my wife had something going on with other man for three or four years at that point. Even on my wedding day, my dad warned me. Other man was in her wedding and a good friend to me for about 10 years, so I was blinded and always argued that my wife wouldn't do that. On August 18th, 2001, my dad died. I did not take that well at all. But in the aftermath of hearing the sad news, I noticed that my wife and other man walking very close on my mom and dad's street and whispering to each other and punched a 1967 Ford Fairlane and let my frustration out about my dad. I noticed the other man was jumpy when we spoke that night after the news broke. It was the first time I thought my parents may be right about my wife and other man. I was a mechanic and I learned that from my dad. So, after he died, I couldn't work on cars without hearing his voice. It was hard on me. So I took a job with other man at Wally World, if you know what I mean. He knew my schedule. In fact, he was friends with the boss, and as I found out later, he made sure I was on night shift. I didn't know that at the time, but when he talked to them about hiring me, he told them I wanted night shift. Anyway, so during this time, my wife says that I changed, and I may have. My dad dying hit me really hard. But she was witchy, and I couldn't do anything right for her. She was always going to his house and taking care of his little girl that he had with his ex that left him because he would get very violent with her. He was on child support and got his baby girl two weeks out of the month. So, my wife would go down there and watch the baby, or at least that's what I was being told. Also, our house was a quarter mile from the other man, who helped us find that house. We even lived with him for a week because the house wasn't available yet. Yes, I know this all is so obvious now, but at the time, I thought we were friends. So during all this, there were times that when I got off work, my wife would pick me up, and yes, other man was with her. There was a Star Wars Episode 2 we went to that now is still a trigger for me. One night, I was at work. My mom called me at work, and she told me that there was a Mother's Day dinner at church that she and my wife went to. She told me that my wife was very dressed up and had a very pretty dress on. But the problem was that my wife didn't stay at the church very long at all. She was in a hurry to leave. My mom said for me to watch out because there's something going on. To this day, my wife says she went straight home and changed clothes and just waited for me, that nothing happened. So fast forward to Monday, June 10th. I had been at band practice on the Friday night before. So on Monday, other man comes to me at work, teared up, and says my wife gave him a BJ while I was at practice. So I go to her job down the street from my job. It's around 1 or 2 p.m., and she should be there. I know she went to work that morning because I said goodbye to her when she left that morning. But she wasn't there. They told me she went home sick. I think she went home because she knew he was going to tell me. So, I get home and confront her. At first, she said he was lying to me. But then she busted out crying and said, yes, it's true. I went crazy. So the story the other man told was that it's just a BJ, a one-time thing. But my wife says that they had been making out for about a month, some touching and kissing. Now I know about trickle truth, but back then I didn't know what it was called, but I believed even way back then, there must be much, much more to the story. So, I take her to other man's house later in the day. But before I went down there, I called other man's dad to tell him, out of respect, that there could be some trouble on their land. To my surprise, he knew about her already and said his son had stolen my wife and I deserved it. I was hot at that point all over again. So we go down there and we're all screaming at each other. But I could tell that my wife and other man looked like a couple arguing. My wife at one point said, but you told me you loved me. Other man's reply was, I don't know what you're talking about. I never said that. There was a lot said that day, but that one sticks with me. Anyway, she says that other man had told her that I slept with one of my exes, but I didn't. But she said that was why she did it. 
She also said that I wasn't paying her any attention because I was going to band practice all the time and working while she wasn't home. But they both swore that my mom and dad were wrong about them earlier on in the story. I don't believe that at all. There's no way that is true, unless my mom and dad are prophets. She says that the fling only lasted the month of May and to the first week of June. She said that the BJ happened on Friday, and that Saturday she went over to other man's house and broke up with him, and he was mad. That other man told me, hoping that I would break up with her, so he could have her. I believe this part is true. She says nothing but touching and kissing and sweet talk happened the rest of the time, and it only started the month before. I do not believe that. The Saturday of June 15th, my boss told me to clock out and go home and check on my wife, that he had heard news that something was going to happen with my wife and other man, so I did. I raced home to find the other man in my yard, dropping off a small boat that I had given him. He told me he felt bad about everything and felt like he needed to return the boat I gave it. My wife was inside with the door locked and looked crusty. Like she just woke up. This was early in the morning. This is also when I found out other men had been helping them with making my schedule. I tell you he was using the boat as an excuse to come talk to my wife without me there. So, for about a year we fussed, broke up, get ready for a divorce... I ended up dating the girl that I was accused of cheating on her with. Yes, that was revenge. Finally, in 2004, we got back together. We never divorced. We moved on and had kids, and everything in life that married couples do. The problem is, I don't like the lies. This obviously lies. We just swept it under the carpet. Well, I love my wife and family very much. This needs to come out. I told her that she wants me to forgive her, but I can't until I know the truth. But she swears that I already know everything. But then last year, she tells me that a part she left out is that she thinks other man is gay and was in love with me, and that's why he wanted to mess us up. To get with me? That's also why he didn't try to sleep with her. Man, I don't know what to think about that one. I really don't. Another part to this is about two or three years earlier, I had to drag the other man off his girlfriend that was pregnant with the other man's baby. He was beating her because she wouldn't abort the baby. He was scared of child support. But my wife saw him do that. She do up close that he beat his women, and still did it. Anyway, I'm hoping for help asking people on Reddit because we can't afford a marriage counselor right now. Am I wrong for letting this stuff come back up? We're great as long as I don't ask about this, but we live in a small town and I see him every other day, it seems like anyway. Does it seem like I could be wrong about my suspicion that this was lies and gaslighting? I knew way before D-Day she was cheating, my friends, family, and bandmates had been talking about it for over a month. Anyway... Thanks for reading if you made it this far. Any help is appreciated. To be clear, the specifics of any sexual activity they may have done isn't really the problem. The problem I have is the possibility of lies that could still be going on. On the night my dad died, he talked to me about his money and that it was in my name. He wanted us to help my mother with it. He was very worried that my wife was cheating with the other man and scared that she would divorce me and take half of the money. This did not happen, but I told my dad that she wasn't going to do that. I feel like such a fool. Stuff like this is what bothers me. My last conversation with my dad was a lie, or at least I think it was, but I didn't know it was. How was he right? What did he see? What didn't I see? Why the story with more holes than Swiss cheese? Looking to the community for some reactions. We've got Ossie Kalk first. It's strange that you were, and stay, a friend to a man who beat women and bullied them, not even taking into account the fact that you had an affair with your wife. Now you have seen from your own experience that cheating has no statute of limitations as a cruel moral crime against the victim of betrayal and deception. I do not know what you expect to receive as advice, but one thing is obvious. You can really feel like a worthy person again if you end this marriage. Otherwise, you are provided with constant doubts, suspicions, triggers, and obsessive thoughts. I am so sorry. P.S. If you do decide to stay, then at least change your place of residence, move to another town, so as not to face other man and other reminders of an affair. Our next bit of advice comes from Natural Cost 2911. If you want to know the truth 20 years later about her lies, you should know it doesn't matter because she got the best of you by you getting back with her. However, 20 years now is what matters. Does she make you feel the same way she did before? You had no kids, no nothing back. So maybe she is more pure now, which is what matters. Clearly, you have a reason to continue to feel this way. I would try and catch her now to see if she's anything like before. Go through her phone and see who she's been talking to. Something is triggering you, a gut feeling is speaking to you about how you feel now, and you're ignoring it like you did 20 years ago and trying to focus on something irrelevant. Wake up. One more quick bit from David Maku. 
Just why did you stay with her? 20 years of suffering. Honestly, OP, I don't think there's a lot of holes in this story. I think what happened was your wife was definitely cheating on you as soon as people started saying something, and you just chose to ignore it. And I think the death of your dad sort of delayed that whole process of confronting her about it. A death is really hard to go through, especially when it's a parent or a child, and shame on your wife for not understanding that or being there for you. And to say that she cheated on you because she was told you cheated on her? How is that an excuse? She should have confronted you then and there. There's a lot of issues here that stem from communication or lack thereof. Other man definitely had you wrapped around his finger the entire time. I think you were a little wrapped up in your own world to really listen to the red flags. It wasn't until it literally slapped you in the face that you decided to confront it. And even then, you stayed with her. You're not wrong for letting this all come back up, but that doesn't make you right either. It should have all been dealt with as soon as you took her to other man's house. Communication is key here, and there wasn't any of that. Next, when your gut tells you something is off, it usually is. It's in that phone. It's always in their phone. Had a trust problem a few years back. Took me a lot to forgive and truly try to move on. It's been three years since I've entered his phone. But tonight, something in my soul told me to go through it. And I did. And I wish I didn't. I can't ever unknow the things I saw, read. I'm in literal shock. I can't even cry. I have nothing, just pure freeze mode. I can't ever tell anyone the things I saw, the things I read. I need a therapist. I can't call a friend about this. I'll never be able to tell anyone about this. But I don't know where or how to process this. I need to move on and let go. I need to move away and start over again somewhere far away and just pretend like this part of my life never existed. We grew up in this town we lived in since kids. We have a memory in every corner of this big city. I can't imagine still living here when everything I know reminds me of him. I'm sick to my stomach. He's sleeping in our room right now. I'm on the couch with his now turned off phone in my hands. I can't believe I did that, but I also can't believe I almost didn't. I don't know which is worse right now. I'm so scared to confront him. I wish to pretend nothing happened. I feel so alone. I just need a hug. I need someone to tell me I'm gonna be okay. I hate myself. Please help me. How do I confront him? Please help. Advice asked, advice received. Coca-Cola Kid says, take copies of everything as he will lie. The OB replies, I don't want to go into depth with photos and solidified memories of what I read. There's nothing that he could say to justify this. I guess that's why I'm so shot. Now that I read this, I have to move on. There's no working on this anymore. Sacy's 2906 says, Hello friend. I found pictures of my wayward husband, face between some other woman's legs, like it was that bad. Makes me sick to think about. Copy everything, because once you confront, you will delete and then act like you are crazy. Trust me, that's in the book of a-holes too. The OP replies, I don't think I would even care if he did delete them. Everything I say was way too real to gaslight me out of it. I'm so sorry your wayward husband would betray you like that. No one deserves this deceit. Hellwolf Keats chimes in, I know it sucks, I know it's hard. I have a freaking video of my wife having sex with my best friend in our bed. I send it to my phone from hers. Male, female, it's all the same. They'll delete it and try to make you seem crazy and say there was never anything there. You were dreaming or imagined it. But here's the thing. That's evidence in court for infidelity. That's your chance for alimony, child support, emotional pain and suffering. This is your legal foundation for divorce and for it to lean in your favor. Patty Solution 6985 says, I couldn't have written your post better myself. I experienced all those things too. One of the biggest mistakes for me was that I didn't tell anyone because I was so embarrassed. It ate at my soul, and I became angry and bitter and sad, and it ruined me. Reach out to friends and family now, and I promise you, they will support you in ways you didn't realize you need. Whether or not you work it out with them, support to help you process these feelings is essential. Do not keep it to yourself. Reach out to friends who you trust and know the both of you. Critical Eggs 5165 says, Please tell your friends. Please tell your families. Stop trying to hide and deny everything that happened. It will cause more harm than good for you. You need the support from your families and friends. Tell them. Let them help you get through the journey you are about to start. The OP replies, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so, so embarrassed. I was wrong after so many years. No one who loved me really liked him for me. I wanted them to be wrong so bad. Critical Egg 51 Sissy Pie replies again, You should not be embarrassed of something that you didn't do. He cheated, not you. 
You had a good heart of wanting to believe someone was better than they were. That's nothing to be embarrassed about. You should not hide his actions. Be truthful to your friends and family. The worst thing you can do is pretend nothing happened. And there's nothing to be embarrassed about because you didn't do anything. You most definitely didn't do the cheating. He should be ashamed of himself. Take the necessary steps to leave him. Like having a place to stay, to sort out packing your things, and whatnot before confronting him. That way, you can confront him, maybe even have a family or friend with you, and then you'll have somewhere to go to further process what happened. People aren't going to judge you or blame you. You did nothing wrong here. Take your time, but don't sit on this for too long. What do you want to tell the OP? Thank you for joining us today in our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.